Hi, I'm B. Smith. Welcome to B. Smith with Style. On today's show, with a little help from my friends, I'll show you some great cleaning ideas to get rid of your kitchen blues. Then, a man who knows something about soul, B.B. Winans, cooks it up with me in the kitchen. Finally, I'll be horsing around in the Hamptons with my good friend Louise Riggio. Discover each special moment. Reach out and grab life day by day. Add just a touch of magic. Find your own kind of style. Walk away with a smile. Every day's your own holiday. Celebrate living in all that you do. This segment is brought to you by the Homemade Simple suite of brands. Over the past seven years, it's been important that I'm pretty precise with the recipes that I give you. But one of the things that you never get to see is what goes on behind the scenes, and we can make quite a mess. One of the things that I like is the exchange between the staff and myself about little tips on how to keep things clean, to remove stains, to take candle wax out. And one of my favorites is cleaning copper pots. I use coarse salt and lemon. The real trick here is to use the lemon to clean. The salt and the lemon is also great for cutting boards. After the show is over, there is an awful lot of work to be done. Hey, Rachel. Hi, B. One of the things that used to drive me absolutely crazy, when I made sauces and I put them in these plastic containers and when they would stain and have this red little glow on it, killed me. But Rachel has a trick, right, Rachel? I do. Um, what we like to use is Cascade Plastic Booster, and you just put your Tupperware in the dishwasher, like you mm -hmm. normally would, and you add the Cascade Plastic Booster to the pre-wash, um, put regular detergent in the side. Mm-hmm. We also use Cascade. And what it does is it takes out the odor and it takes out the redness that tomato sauce leaves. Aha, uh -huh. we like that. <laughs> yes, we do. So it'll clean all the plastic wear. Exactly, exactly. And you can actually also throw sponges in there. Instead of throwing away your dirty sponges, it'll clean them right in the dishwasher. Aha. Uh -huh. Kevin, what you doing? I am doing the glassware. Anytime I gotta do a whole bunch of glasses, just add a little Dawn to the water, just dip, then I rinse it in the clean, hot water and just put it up to dry, and that's all you gotta do. So B, sometimes there's a stain just won't come out of the glass. You just gotta hit it real quick with the sponge to break it up, dip it again, rinse it off, and you're all done. Now that's a good tip for your next dinner party. You know, Toby, in my house, my husband does the cleanup, I do the cooking. Well, that's a good deal. Where is he now with all this dirty dishes? Well, I was hoping you could give me some tips that I could tell him on how to get this stuff clean. Well, you know, we just found this product. Um, it's Dawn Power Dissolver. Would you like a little demonstration? Hey, that's what I'm here for. Yeah. So I'm going to show you how to do this first, you know, just so that I can get a jump on cleaning later. OK. I'm going to spray this on. And I'm going to leave it on for about 15 minutes. This one's not that bad. Otherwise, I might leave it on for maybe, I don't know, 20, 30 mm -hmm. minutes. But this one looked horrible. It, I had no idea. I was thinking I was going to throw it out. It looks pretty bad it now. It was pretty, it was worse. So oh, that's coming it's off amazing nicely. how that's good great. it cleans. That's and really then good. we can just put it under the sink and rinse it off, and we're done. You know what? I might do some more oven-baked roast and things like that. Oh, and then goody, he could just dishes. clean them up like that. <laughs> Well, with this, he won't mind. Hey, Jill, what you doing? I am removing wax from our linens by ironing it and using the bounty paper towels. We'll take a fresh one here. OK. So let's see how it's doing. That's coming along. When I'm at home and I'm doing this and I'm using cotton, I, I like to use a, uh, a cleaning agent that removes uh, the rest of the oil that's in there. Mm -hmm. 
So that's good. Now, have you ever tried this on a carpet? No, I yeah. haven't. It works it's really it. well, but you have to be careful on nylon carpet because mm -hmm. the iron can't be too hot. Mm -hmm. But it's it probably melt it or something, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. But it back. also removes the uh, the the wax. The wax. That's good. Yeah. That was a great tip. Wait, wait, B. I want to show you another tip I just learned today. This one, you take your crusty when you have the crust on your. Uh, can opener here, you don't want to soak your can opener because you don't want to rust your blades. So this trick using a bounty sheet, you just put the bounty in there mm -hmm. and then twist it just like you would oh, on amazing. a can. Wow, I like that. that. Quite a crusty can opener, it wasn't was. it? <laughs> it's doing it happens great... in our business. Yeah, very good tip. Isn't it me? I just learned that. Yeah. I love it. I'm going to go home and do it myself. I do too, and I'm going to let you keep spinning. Okay. Hey, Vincent, what you up to? Oh, hi, just finishing up. Uh-huh. Getting ready to mop the floors and have just soaked our kitchen vent in this and just amazed that Mr. Clean has gotten this so clean. About it how was long? so greasy. How long? I can see there. How oh, long did you Just uh, a few it? minutes. A few minutes and it just wipes right off. Oh, well, that's great. It really cuts through. And let's smell this. Mm -hmm. So great. No hospital smell. Uh. So great. I used to think it was just for floors. Oh, it's great because there's no rinsing uh -huh. involved with Mr. Clean, but it's great for everything, including the wiping down and the finishing touches, and we're done. Hey, I like that. Those were some great cleaning tips. Now, you may have to do this at home yourself, but of course today I had Jill, Vincent, Rachel, Toby, and Cabot. Woo! We have to take a cleaning bow. Hands up, bow down. <laughs> for more ideas for your home, go to www.homemadesimple.com. Coming up, gospel legend B.B. Wyman stops by the kitchen for a bite of soul. And later, we'll join Louise Riggio in the Hamptons at her horse farm. I think I'm blushing today because B.B. Winans is in the kitchen with me. <laughs> How are you, dear? Oh, I'm good now. Hey. I'm good now. I'm good, too. I'm ready to stir something up. You've been stirring up a lot lately. Mm, this is true. This is true. Dream. Yes, yes. Fabulous. Thank you so much. Your I, latest CD. I think it's the, it's the best thing that I've ever done. We've all been moved by Dr. King. But at what moment did you know that you were actually going to use his words in a song? I was watching television, and I kept hearing over the television, I have a dream. And one day it hit me, mm -hmm. and I said, oh, I, I went to the internet, put up the speech off the internet, and I read it from top to bottom. Mm -hmm. Moved me like I've never been moved before. And I went to the piano room, I sat there, mm -hmm. and it just dropped into my spirit. And before I knew it, I had a song that was taken from his speech. Wow, that's excellent. Yeah, yeah. Oh, good. You know, growing up, reading all the history, mm -hmm. and, and now being a co-writer with a man who did so much for our country, it's kind of spooky and overwhelming at the same time. It's a beautiful thing. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Now, do you cook? Hey, I cook um, when people tell me <laughs> how to cook. Okay. So. <laughs> well, let me just move you down just a little bit here. Okay. <laughs> All right. These are our fillet of soul. Now, what I love about fillet of soul is it's very delicate, mm -hmm. and the recipe that we are doing is a, a filet of sole with a beurre blanc sauce. It's a classic French recipe. So okay. if you'll just take the flour okay. and pour out, pour out uh, about, how about much? half of that, which would be about a half a cup. All uh -huh. right. And uh, if you will just pick up the salt over the there. Salt right mm -hmm. here. Okay. And give me uh, three beets. One, two, three. That would be good. I'm feeling like a chef. I'm telling you, I'm feeling like you be. It's like music now. Okay. If you'll take the pepper grinder, mm -hmm. same thing. Mm hmm You got it. Hey. Yeah. So it's actually here, we're salting and peppering to taste. So that's okay. not too much. If you'll take a fork and just lift one of these up, I'll mm -hmm. let you hold this. Okay. And dredge it through the flour. And I'll put the butter. And I'm using about a tablespoon of butter here. Okay, when you say dredge, you mm -hmm. mean, okay. That's it, that's looking very good. You now have a record label in association yes. with a record company, right? Yes, we you are. Darius Rucker and... Yes, uh, Head and & Beach yes. and Jill Scott. Yes. Uh, Steve McKeever. It's worth 
all the work now, you know? And you also have a production company, and you're going to mm -hmm. use your beautiful, silky voice, mm -hmm. right, to do an animated film. Yes, yes. Um, it's going to be called Scrooge on 125th Street. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> now, what yes. made you think of that? Well, Mitch? I had some wonderful, wonderful writers, Michael mm -hmm. Ammons and Bill Grant, that came together, and they already had the idea and the script, and so I introduced two other people in the business, and... Right away, um, one of the great actors, Sam Jackson, attached himself to it. Samuel L. Jackson. Yes. Excellent. So I'm excited about that. Now, how long do we, we cook? I'm going to let this cook two to three minutes on each side. OK. Yeah. Oh, that's looking beautiful. Why well, it don't look like that when I'm cooking? Well, that's because you don't cook that often. <laughs> you Probably somebody does it for you. <laughs> that looks good. Okay. Yeah. Okay, now for my beurre blanc reduction, mm -hmm. I used a quarter cup of white wine, a quarter cup of white wine vinegar, and a quarter cup of shallots. So I let this reduce for about five minutes. What is beurre blanc sauce? Okay, beurre is butter in French, and okay. blanc is white. So it's a white butter sauce. Okay. Yes. I'm adding a quarter of a cup of heavy cream. We're going to let it heat up. Mm -hmm. You have a movie that will be coming out probably next... <sighs> Yeah. Yes. Movies is something that I thought about, but I really have never pursued. And so I'm briefly, I'm sitting next to this man not knowing who he is. And he turns around and he says, I want you in my next movie. And I'm saying, oh, OK. And he says, I want you to play an FBI agent. And found out as time went on, long story short, he was Jonathan Dimon. And he was very serious. They called and brought me in. And so now I'm in my first movie with people such as Denzel Washington. You start at the top, don't you? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right, I'm gonna whisk in the butter. Okay. A little at a time. Okay, if you'll just hold this for me. Mm -hmm. Okay, wow. I'm ready for a little more. Okay. Great. What type of music do you listen to? Mm -hmm. I love great vocalists. Aha. Uh -huh. Great vocalists. It has to be great vocalists and then a great song. So you're talking about people like um, Anita Baker. Uh -huh. You're talking about people like Donny Hathaway that I love to listen to. People like that. This looks great. One thing here is you don't want to overcook it. I'm right. putting in a teaspoon of uh, tarragon mm -hmm. and a teaspoon of basil. That adds flavor and it also makes it look pretty. I'm gonna add a half teaspoon of salt. I like to use sea salt. And I'm gonna use white pepper. And that was a quarter of a teaspoon of uh, white pepper. Okay. Now, we're about ready to taste. So let's uh, plate up, is that it? That's it, hey. you got it. I have zucchini squash and patty pan squash, mm -hmm. which I happen to like and I blanched those and then I sauteed them. Okay, what does blanch mean? Blanching is quick cooking vegetables so they retain their color and their firmness. I usually put them in boiling water for about a minute, maybe a minute and a half, and then I take them out. And if I'm going to cook them right away, then I put them in the saute pan. Or if I want them to stop cooking, I put them in cold water until I'm ready to use them. That looks good. You yeah. can burr blanc me anytime. Well, all right. <laughs> I wish you continued success. Thank you so much for joining thank me. Thank you. It has been my pleasure. Oh, thank you. And I'll be back, OK? OK, please. Next up, these babies get plenty of pampering at this picturesque horse farm in the Hamptons. To find out more about the segments featured on today's show, visit our website, bsmithwithstyle.com. Tucked away in Watermill, New York, is Louise Riggio's horse farm. Meadowview houses 20 horses and is fully equipped for family and friends to ride and enjoy. Welcome. Good to see you. It's so good to see you, my friend. Yeah. Welcome to Meadowview. Welcome back. Yes, yeah. I finally got you back to maybe ride. Oh, yes, I think I will okay. today. This is. A family farm. Mm -hmm. It's not a business. No, nope, not at all. Now, the farm is basically um, the type of farm that you would see in Kentucky. Is that right? Or is it well, based? So, so people have said, said uh -huh. because they're kind of the rolling fields, and that's why we've 
called it Meadowview because of the rolling fields. The vistas that we have here, and it's, it's been likened to Kentucky. Right, but it really is the Hamptons. It's the Hamptons, <laughs> it's Long Island, yes, <laughs> yes. And how many acres do you have? We have uh, 65 acres wow. here. Wow, wow. And, and we have, what's nice about the farm, we have a bridle path that kind of twines in and out. It's actually two and a half miles. Uh-huh. Now, during the winter months, uh -huh. you uh, ship some of the horses to uh, Some of our Florida, show right? horses go down to Florida to do the uh, Wellington Palm Beach circuit, January, mm -hmm. February, and March. Some of them stay here. Mm -hmm. You know, we have some retired guys who live up here. Uh -huh. We have babies who need to grow up here. Right, they need right. to be babies, just playing in the fields. Uh -huh. So they'll stay, but we have staff and complete management that takes care of them. We do have a rider up who is my daughter Stephanie's trainer, mm -hmm. and she's actually putting one of her horses through paces. Karen? Karen. She's on Da Vinci, uh -huh. and she is putting him through some of his exercise training, and she'll explain some of it to you in a little bit. Let's take a walk over to the okay. barns. Okay, come. I'm happy to show you. So this is Aspen. This is our boy Aspen, and uh -huh. you can see. Yep, he's waiting for me. Oh, oh a little treat there. You absolutely, have. absolutely. Right. How are you? He's he's my daughter's one of our, my daughter's show horses. Well, when did Stephanie start riding? Stephanie was five, but actually her love of horses started in her stroller in Central Park. Is that right? Seeing the handsome carriages and uh -huh. you know, and she finally at five years old said, Mom, can I start taking lessons? You know, the last time we were here, Stephanie was here. She was, it was really great. And she was l lessening for the Hampton Classic. That's right. How'd she do? She brought him a blue ribbon. She did fabulous, <laughs> yeah. Now, Da Vinci is a jumper. Da Vinci's, da Vinci's a jumper. These two are show hunters. Uh -huh. And uh, I don't know if you know the difference between the divisions. The jumper is clean and time. Mm -hmm. Clean means no rails down. You know, it's clean. The show hunters, to me, it's always been the beauty contest of the show world. Right. The, the horses being judged, how they move, how the rider makes them move, proper striding, proper leads. It, to me, it's a beauty contest. But would you like to take a ride? I'd love to. I'm going to take it down to our fields. So you can see our babies uh -huh. and some of our retired folks. Oh, hey. We'll put you on this guy. Okay. okay. Aspen and I are old friends yes. now. <laughs> Hey, Karen. Hi. That looked beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank how you, you. How are you doing? I'm doing great. So, B, you want to ride? Yeah. How long has it been since you rode? Well, it's been a couple years. Okay. Well, you're going to ride Aspen. He's a great horse, and you're going to have a great time. Excellent. I just met him at the stables. Okay. Perfect. So come and get you on. Okay. <laughs> You ready to ride Aspen? I certainly am. I Great. even have a treat for Aspen. Oh, he loves mint. Hey, yes. That's his favorite. So just to go over a little bit of the tack, this is the bridle. Mm -hmm. Okay, and in his mouth is a bit. So we'll take the reins over his head. Okay. And then we'll go back to the saddle here. This is your saddle, English saddle. This mm -hmm. is what you'll be riding in, obviously. Now, for most people riding, what is the difference between Western and what we're doing today? The biggest difference uh, between Western and English is the saddle. The Western mm -hmm. saddle has a horn right here, right. Mm -hmm. and it's a lot thicker, a lot more padding. Right. Um, so this is a little flatter. Sleeker. Yeah. It has to be to your armpits. That's uh -huh. how you kind of tell the length of your leg. OK. So and you're you holding wanna, it from here, right? So that actually doesn't look so oh, okay. bad. OK, well, let me do it that way. The next thing you'll want to do is check your girth, which mm -hmm. is this, which holds the saddle on so it doesn't slide and, and everything's very comfortable. Mm -hmm. And, it, and to check, you just check, you just put your hand there to see if it's tight. And it's pretty tight. Right, uh -huh. It's pretty tight, so it won't move when you get on. Okay. And so, All and right. that's basically it. And then you're ready to get on. Aha. Uh -huh. Safe of the farm. Safety never, safety takes, never a takes a holiday. Everyone who rides should wear a safety helmet. Okay. I think the biggest thing is remembering to keep the heels down. Yes. It's yeah. very hard because your balance is in your heels and your upper body, and if you're a little worried or a little nervous, or a beginner rider, right. um, most people, the first thing they'll do is lean forward, uh -huh. and that throws the horse's balance off as well. Right. So you really want to make sure that you're in the center of your saddle and very square in the center and your heels are down, and that's, uh, that's very important. Karen, why don't you get on Leo and we'll walk back to the barn Excellent. Together. Great. Good boy. 
Thank you, Louise. Anytime. All right, I'll Come see again. you later. Okay, bye bye. Thank you. Bye. That's our show for today. Thanks for watching. And remember, whatever you do, just do it with style. Thank you, Dan.